You're watching Into Wine TV, and today we're talking about corks versus alternative closures. And Bartholomew, what is your thought on what makes the most appropriate closure for any given bottle of wine? I'll go back to 1980 when I was in Australia, and I was staying with the Hillsmith family at Yolumba, where I was helping harvest wines as a 18 year old kid on his gap year from school. And they brought out a Pusivelle Rhine Riesling um, in a screw top. And they asked me what I thought of wine and I said, um, you yeah, know, the wine is fantastic. I just hope you never put your wines in a screw top. And they said, well, actually this is one of our wines and the Stelvin, it's a Stelvin screw top and there have already been 20 years of, of experiment. This is 1980. They'd already had 20 years of experience with Stelvin and proven that it ages just as well. Um, so really, I'd rather have almost every wine in screw top. I do like corks for wines which are really designed to age for a long time. Even though screw top will enable a wine to age for a long time, I think cork is my favorite choice. The only problem with cork, of course, is you get a lot of TCA which is uh, the smell, when people say wine is corked, it's a chemical called TCA that's, that's causing that, or, or not a chemical, a, a yeast, whatever it is. Where does um, that come fungus. from? How does the It is a chemical, chemical compound. It's called trichlorinosol, so that's abbreviated to TCA, and it saps the wine of its flavor. Um, it's a ubiquitous uh, chemical um, molecule in our environment. It's found everywhere. You get a real bad hit of it, for example, on uh, store-bought, uh, already pre-cut carrots, uh, if you want to get a sense of the smell. It's, some people describe it as a wet cardboard uh, smell when it's really obvious. Sometimes it's not so obvious. It's, it's gotten into the wine and affected the palate, and so the wine is not as vibrant, not as complex, doesn't have as much flavor as it normally would. I'm very sensitive to it. Some people aren't. I even know a few people who like corked wines, <laughs> believe it or not. But, uh, but I'm very sensitive to it, and I, and I do find that between 6 to 10% of, of wines that are closed with uh, cork do uh, exhibit some level of, of TCA taint, and frankly, I'm really tired of it. Uh, so I totally agree uh, with Bartholomew that I'd like to see more, more wine under Stelvin closures and other closures. There's a lot of experimentation going on with, with other closures that might al allow small amounts of air to get to the wine and, and age it in a, in a graceful way like cork can do. And the frustrating thing, of course, is, and I know we've all had this experience, and I'm sure viewers have had this experience, where you spend 20, 30 bucks, and it is corked, and you're dumping it down the drain. And I, I've dumped so many wines down the drain, and I, I keep thinking about the failure rate that we have with cork. And I, I'm a fan of cork, like, like with you, Bartholomew, uh, for certain things. I love the romance of it. I never get tired of that sound. I'm in a restaurant with my wife, and I hear the sound. It's like, oh, someone's having wine. It's a, great, it's a great visceral experience. But the failure rate in the wine industry of, of 6%, let's just take 6 as an example. What other industry can you have a failure rate of 6% and still, be, and still make, make and market a product? Absolutely, absolutely. It's it, it's a crime, I think, um, and and a lot of winemakers are you know trying trying out various things. I think in Australia they've been doing testing for a lot longer than elsewhere. I find a lot of my beloved German Rieslings have gone to uh, screw top closures in recent years. I recently uh, taste tested um, a wine here in in uh, California that was made uh, identical vineyard, identical winemaking style, everything else. The Plump Jack Reserve Cabernets uh, have been made both in a, a screw top version and uh, the corked version. And we opened the first one that was made uh, a few months ago, the 97, and uh, did it blind, uh, several of us. All of us, I think with one exception, preferred what turned out to be the screw top version. And I was surprised, because I, unlike you, had not yeah, had I've, done, I've had that experience as well. Made, uh, yeah, uh, and the the screw top version was was fresher, uh, yeah. more interesting. More Last time I was at home in England, we uh, my father opened a bottle of 1982 Talbo Chateau Talbo you know, in a Magnum, which was you know, we were really excited to have it for dinner, um, and it was completely corked. Um, I actually. Uh, used it to teach him something he'd never seen before. But, um, uh, the plastic technique. Yeah, if you get um, mm -hmm. cling foil or, or saran wrap, saran wrap. Um, in this country it's called saran wrap in England, mm -hmm. cling foil, and you put it into the wine, the TCA is attracted to it and clings to it and takes it out. And okay, it rendered the Talbot drinkable, but not 
perfect. And in yeah. fact, my father, and, and he found it fascinating, and he's written about it in the upcoming Decanter article. But in the end, I, the next day, I thought, let's, let's drink that wine. He said, oh, I've thrown it away. And I thought, that's a bit of a waste, because it was at least drinkable. But it, it, to him, it wasn't good enough. Sure. Um, so why wouldn't all wines be closed with a screw top? Well, there's tradition, there's some wineries that are just adamant that um, they don't want it. And some markets in Europe uh, aren't um, accepting of it. And in America, I import a wine called Spy Valley. And when we started importing it, uh, it was in corks. And most of the New Zealand wineries were going gradually towards screw top. And now the entire industry there is screw top. But um, we had problems where it was very well accepted in the East and very well accepted in the West of the US, but in the Midwest, places like Ohio, they hadn't accepted screw tops yet. So, but within a year, we said, okay, change the screw top because everyone wants it. Um, what I don't like are the other closures. I, I hate those, what a tetra cork, and that there are some, some wines, corks that look like fake corks that look like foam, and some which are just solid rubber, and they're really hard to get out of a bottle. They're not really very nice. Yeah. And they don't allow wine to breathe or age at all. Yeah. They completely seal that bottle, unlike cork, which does have some uh, permeability to it. Yes. Mike, the other thing that I think, just real quickly, is that for a, for a lot of winemakers that are, or, or wine owners, wherever they may be, uh, they're slow to change because of perception, but also when you change a bottling line, assuming you, having all, you have all this equipment to go from setting up as cork to now suddenly setting up and getting new equipment to do a screw cap, that's, that's in a capital investment that some people are not yet willing to make. Mm -hmm. I think they'll get there because the failure rate is so high, but a lot of people like, we probably want to, but it's cost prohibitive to now change all of our equipment. So, it, 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 and it is still possible to have a corked wine with no cork, but the TCA tank can get into a wine mm -hmm. that has been uh, closed under a screw cap. It's much less common, but because uh, TCA is, is ubiquitous in the winemaking environment, you have to be, you know, practicing all kinds of sterilization and, and clean techniques to, to avoid it. It can, you can still get it. I've, I've had it, but it's, it's much rarer. The cork industry has been lobbying awfully hard oh, yes. for us not to give up cork. And they, you know, to their credit, they have taken a lot more steps over the last 10, 15 years to reduce the level of TCA. They're being much more scientific about it. There was a huge problem 10, 15 years ago that they were cleaning the corks uh, with uh, chlorine, which really um, pretty much guarantees you're going to have TCA. I mean, that's that's the comedy, the the stuff that's in the soil and the environment when it when it interacts with chlorine. Um, you know, you get TCA. Um, so they they stopped that practice. They 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 now test them a lot more thoroughly. But they're on a really committed campaign these days to convince people that it's going to kill the environment to use screw caps. That uh, because cork comes from trees and doesn't you know kill the trees, you're harvesting it, but the trees live on. That it's much more sustainable. Not to mention it helps sustain the livelihoods of uh, Portuguese uh, farmers <laughs> who grow cork trees and, and harvest them, uh, as compared to using um, the screw caps. So we're really seeing that backlash. One thing I tell people is like you know if if you buy wine routinely from a wine store. Uh, ask them what their return policy is for a cork bottle of wine. Mm. Uh, if they if they will take a bottle back, some will, some won't. Know that up front. And if if a wine is flawed, not not flawed like I don't like this wine, but technically flawed like with TCA, uh, save that wine and take it back to the, to the store to see if they might be able to, to do sad, that. Some don't. And sadly, most people don't recognize what a cork wine is. Yeah. They just buy a wine and they think it's not very good. So really, I'd rather much have it. I'd much rather have a good screw top um, than than anything else. All right. You're well, not alone. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like the alternative closures may be the wave of the future. Uh, but until that happens, we'll have to deal with some corked wines from time to time. So share with us any thoughts that you have about uh, some wines that you've tasted or thoughts on our show. We'd love to hear from you. And thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time on Into Wine TV. Mm -hmm.